The Celtic Explorer is Ireland's largest research vessel. With over 65 metres length, it can accommodate 35 personnel with around 20 scientists. It is designed for fisheries acoustic research, oceanographic, hydrographic and geological investigations, as well as buoy mooring and ROV operations. This expedition is run by Dr. Aaron Lim and his team. Hi, I'm Aaron Lim from University College Cork. We're currently en route to the Porcupine Bank Canyon, which is a submarine canyon at the very edge of Ireland's continental shelf. It ranges in water depth from about 500 metres water depth to about 3,500 metres out onto the Abyssal Plain. We're interested in the canyon for the large variety of cold water coral habitats within the canyon. These range from smaller cold water coral gardens to cold water coral reefs and the extremely large cold water coral carbonate mounds, which can be over 100 metres in height. On this cruise, we are mapping the cold water coral habitats. We're using state-of-the-art sonar called Multibeam to do this. This allows us to look at the shape, size, and distribution of these cold water coral habitats. We're also acquiring ROV video footage within these coral habitats. We're doing this so that we can create 3D photogrammetric reconstructions, and this allows us to see fine-scale details within the habitats, and essentially it allows us to take these coral habitats back to the lab with us for further investigation. Finally, we're deploying a number of monitoring stations that we call lander systems that we'll leave within the canyon around these coral habitats for about three months. And this allows us to monitor what's happening in the canyons in terms of current speed, current direction. And we also collect samples continuously for three months of their food, um, microplastics that might be transported through the system and also sediments. Engineers, scientists and the crew work together in the dive procedure, safely deploying the ROV with equipment such as the lander, drill, Niskan bottles and camera equipment attached. This small ROV shack is where all the mission commands happen. Pump coming on load. Okay guys, whenever you're ready. Okay, well, yep, for us is all enabled. Okay, Roger. Concentration, excitement and tension is high. As we all hope, no complications occur. Roger. And the dive begins. Deep sea corals generally thrive in areas of accelerated current flow or in deep sea topographic highs and in depths of up to 6,000 metres in temperatures as low as minus one degrees Celsius. In the Porcupine Canyon, Lophelia pertusa is the key reef builder. Each opening contains one single soft-bodied polyps, which reaches its tentacles out, filtering and feeding off particles in the water continuously secreting calcium carbonate to the reef. Cold water coral reef growth varies anywhere from 1 to 25 millimetres a year. In recent years, as research has increased, over 3,300 cold water coral species have been identified and the number keeps rising as more and more of our oceans are being discovered. In the ROV shack, engineers have just set a lander down upon the seafloor. Already deep sea creatures, such as this crab, accept the foreign object and find shelter in its shadows. The lander is perched right on the continental shelf edge, overlooking the mysterious abyss. Here it will remain for 65 days, continuously collecting data.
With the first part of the dive completed, the focus moves to taking some coral samples. The right coral has to be identified. The desired specimen is Lophelia. The ORV takes a sample to bring back aboard. Working with these robotic arms is a fine art and takes intuitive competence that only years of experience provides. What's the deepest you've ever been with this? 3,000 meters wow. into the wire. Well, the old wire, we've got a 4,000 meter wire on it now, which we have not fully, we have down to 2950 last year. With the sample safely in the drawer, the last thing left to do is take a sediment core sample. Back in the wet lab, scientists are already preparing the corals for storage, fixing them in Davidson's solution, and also preserving some samples in ethanol. Further work on these will be continued back at University College Cork Laboratories in conjunction with water samples and CTDs. The CTD is basically collecting conductivity, temperature, depth profiles. And I'm looking at how the cold water corals are distributed along the seafloor and so once you notice a change in the conductivity temperature depth profile you realize that you have certain or disproportionately spaced distribution of cold water corals and so where you have high amount of cold water corals you have a dip in oxygen concentration where you have low distribution of cold water corals, you see that you have high amount of oxygen concentration. Again, water mass differences force the distribution of cold water corals. So where you have different water masses, you expect to see different distributions of the cold water corals. And so yeah, basically that is what we are looking at, how differences in water masses which comes about as a result of the temperature and salinity differences in the seawater affects the distribution of the cold water corals down the ocean. Water samples are retrieved from the bottles in this Niskan bottle rosette. These are then filtered for particles to investigate type and amount of particulate matter at the various locations. Sediment cores are bagged and stored for further analysis back on land. With all tasks completed, the crew work to get the ROV back on deck. Operations run 24 hours where the rotating day and night shift. No time is wasted to maximize the amount of time spent conducting science in this short time period. All eight landers have safely been deployed to their targeted locations. There they will stay collecting data and monitoring changes within the submarine canyon for 65 days. In just over two months the crew will be back on the second leg of this expedition retrieving the landers and the acquired data. This is the first time this equipment has been used at these depths and in these conditions. Suspense is high as the crew eagerly anticipate the findings of the data they have collected, each keen to see what questions they may answer or raise. Okay. 
on deck? Observed from above, the ocean is a vast, shimmering lullaby of gentle waves. But to peer below its surface and dive into its depths is to discover a largely unexplored world of wondrous life.